welcome to the Empower Coffee Break. Uh, Tuesdays at one o'clock, we talk about working women issues, surviving and thriving in the workplace, whether you're a woman or not. Um, anything about the culture that we work in and how we survive and thrive as human beings in that culture. And I'm so excited that today we're expanding this conversation to include working moms. So I'm Dana Theus, founder of Empower Coaching. We have Mary Brody, our <laughs> guru behind the scenes, who we is very interesting and I'd love to have her in conversations. And today we're introducing one of our bloggers, a good friend of mine and um, a sort of parallel thinker, uh, Lizzie McGrory. And I'll let Mary introduce her in just a moment. But I want to I want to expand this idea of working mothers into working parents and into um, Lizzie and I, if you follow any of our blogs and we did video series last year, you know, it, this, this conversation about bringing our whole selves to work and to home um, is very important. It's important to each of us as individuals. It's important to our workplaces. And I just love the way Lizzie thinks about this from the perspective of the individual mom or parent. And, you know, how do you be your best self and be your best mom and perform well in your career and in your workplace? Because those things are conversations we're used to having independently and they're not independent at all. They're very integrated. And just Lizzie brings a very integrated view to that, which I can't wait to share with you all. So um, I'm about to sign off and let uh, Mary introduce Lizzie. But I want to say we do have an open seat today. So if you want to uh, call in, if you're on uh, Blab and you want to come in and ask some questions and join the conversation, please click on the open seat. And uh, after we get initial dialogue, Mary will introduce you into the conversation. And we also have the chat box open. So feel free to use that to participate as well. So Mary, would you introduce Lizzie? Sure. Liz McGorry is a certified professional coach, speaker, author, and working mom expert on about.com. She's changing the working mom culture one working mom at a time by guiding working moms to be an audacious boss of their habits and personal energy. Welcome, Lizzie. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Dana. So I want to, Liz, I want to ask you a question because, you know, you and I have talked about this topic for a long time. There's certainly a lot of content here, lots of questions. But, but, but you've, in the last, like, month or two, you've really kind of brought this conversation to this idea of the working mom culture and that it's time to change the culture. And I think that's fascinating because most of us working moms feel so isolated, right? We're like, I have my family and my, you know, it starts at six o'clock in the morning and I got a bam, 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 bam. And, and I'm in my lane, right? Cause I got to survive my lane <laughs> and make sure I get everything done needs to happen. And you're talking about a culture that we all belong to. And that's, it's kind of mind blowing to me because my only way of associating that is the play group, like the working mom culture to me felt like the play group or the daycare group or something like that. But I think you're talking about something broader, aren't you? I am. So if you take a look at what the word culture means, it means that there is a common belief, there's common behaviors, and there's characteristics of a group that has similarities. And we as working moms are going after these bogus goals of having it all, doing it all and balancing and juggling. It, it all just sounds like a major headache and so much work to do and so chaotic that if we were able to, as a group, define what those beliefs, behaviors and characteristics are, we wouldn't feel so isolated. There's a platform now to have a conversation and to feel included and then for people to lead from that so that everybody is warned before they come into working motherhood of what's it all about, how you can thrive at it and how you can, I was gonna say be happy, but maybe just not miserable and alone and thinking that you're suffering and it's all your fault. And there's nothing you can do about it, but there is. And that's what I'm out trying to create a movement about. So, and by the way, you use a really important word there, conversation. So one of the things that we have at Empower 
women is the forums and you're hosting a forum which is designed to be a conversation around working motherhood um, and I I don't know Mary can we publish the the link for that because we definitely want this to become a conversation that goes on so um, you can go to our forums at any time and, and have this as a true conversation um, but you know let's talk about this idea of isolation versus culture and what is the what do you believe the current working mom culture is? What's the default? Where are we I right now? I believe right now we are all stressed out, I think. And the working, mm, 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 the women's movement was not fought so hard for, so we could all be chaotic and stressed and comparing with one another and wasting so much of our personal energy on worrying and juggling all these balls that we need to be doing it all. What, what a yucky culture. Like, no wonder no one warns anyone about it. Because if they were forewarned, I mean, I don't know. Would things be differently? Would things be different for them? I'm not sure. But life isn't easy. And that's what our culture is like right now. And that's the reason why I started to become a working mom, because I didn't want other new moms coming into the workplace to suffer as much as I did. Yeah, well, and which, what do you, you know, it's funny. Culture? What do I think the culture is? Yeah. Um, I think I, I, a lot of what you said, I agree with, and I'm intrigued with what you said earlier about culture includes and is based on beliefs. And when I think about the working mom culture, now my kids are older, so I do think this is shifting a little bit, but one thing I don't think has shifted is the belief that uh, there's some kind of perfection and balance out there that we just haven't achieved yet. <laughs> you know, there, that there's there's some kind of belief that there there is a way to have it all, to have the perfect children, the perfect family, the perfect work environment and, and career. And, and I just fundamentally think that if we could get rid of that belief, then working moms would have much more permission to find their own, you know, f find their own balance, which doesn't always look very balanced from the outside. Yes. Um, so I, you know, that that perfection thing, that that image in our minds of what it's supposed to be, it seems to be very strong. It, well, and that, some of that is with parenthood too, right? It's not yes, just. We're all unique. Um, now, one thing I wanted to also ask you to talk about, um, because again, the the whole, to me the idea, the word that you use, the culture. And this idea of audacious, like to me, those words are so powerful and I don't associate them with working moms, right? So I, I love this conversation that you're beginning because the suggestion that we could be audacious is like kind of blows my brain up in a good way. <laughs> so what does it mean to you to be an audacious working mom? I love the word audacious. It's a core desire feeling of mine. So any goals that I set, a desired outcome or feeling that I want to feel is audaciousness. Um, I found the word because I was sick and tired of saying, <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to be brave. I love that song. Say what you want to say. I want to hear you be brave. Anyways, so I was tired of saying I want to be brave. I was tired of saying I want to be courageous. Uh, and I honestly went on thesaurus.com and I was like, audacious. And then I found bodacious. So those are my two core desired feelings. Every gosh darn day, I write those two words down. So to answer your question about being an audacious working mom is for you to feel empowered, to feel in control, to have a strong emotional intelligence so that you are not comparing yourself to all the other working moms or women or men, whoever because you are so unique and you do have this gift that you're meant to be giving to the world. You also have this energy that you give off to people. And if you are there with a weak emotional intelligence and you're caught up in your own thoughts, 
you can't give the world the energy that you're supposed to be giving them. And, oh gosh, can you feel the audaciousness? I hope you can. So other ways that a working mom can be audacious is to not be caught up in that perfectionism. Like you said, Dana, like you don't have to have a super clean house. You don't have to hire a cleaning lady. You can just let the world accept you for who you are and what you're bringing to the world, just your presence. The audaciousness of all of this is just to believe that it is all possible. And that is what I really want to drive home to working moms, that you can be audacious. You could start being audacious right now, like just decide, just to say, you know what? I am going to be more audacious in how I think, the choices that I make, they will be based on your values and your priorities, not someone else's. And just try. And and and, and give, yourself give yourself permission to explore, to explore and decide, and okay, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do something else. Because that's what does audacious mean to you is gonna be different than to me, to, you know, to other people. And it's all we have to decide, we have to find that for ourselves. Uh, you know, it's funny. <laughs> As you were talking, I'm remembering, like, like when do I remember breaking breaking that mold in my own mind, like what the perfect mom was? And ironically, it was that I think my kids were like 10, 11, 12, something like that. And we used to entertain, you know, just have people over on the weekend and stuff. And one weekend, we were doing soccer games and all this kind of stuff. And I remember thinking, you know what? I'm just going to call my friends. I'm going to say it's BYO whatever. Like, I don't have time. I'm going to have meat. <laughs> We're going to have meat on the grill. You guys bring everything else. And everybody goes, okay. And they just showed up. So I didn't have all these beautiful tables set and, you know, all this stuff. We had the best time. We had the best meal. And I remember thinking I would never have given myself permission to do that two or three years ago. But the fact that my kids were at soccer games all day, I just didn't have a choice. And, boy, I wish I'd done this sooner. <laughs> um, but I felt like I was risking my perfect motherhood, you know, by suggesting it was a potluck. <laughs> yeah. and, and so for some people, that's not a big deal. But for me, that was huge. That gave me I was when I started giving myself permission to just, you know, do what do what made sense and then see where that went. Um, so I think we all have to your point. We're all unique. We all have kind of different ahas, but learning from them instead of beating ourselves up. Oh, I had to do a potluck. Oh my God. My friends must hate me. You know, <laughs> it, it's almost like, I wonder like that 1950s, the stereotypical, right? I'll say stereotypical. It really is. Cause the 1950s mom, like when women went to work, they carried that mom with them and said, now I'm going to work and do that mom. And we're going to do both at the same time. And we're going to do them both well because we can, because we're, in, you know, we're super people. And that's, well, it's not even human. <laughs> you know, you know, you're absolutely right. And yet to, to show compassion for those people, one of the things that I'm, you know, Mad Men, I'm not a big Mad Men watcher, but if one of the things that was interesting about getting into that mindset, back then the story was women can't do it. Yeah. So, those women had to prove to themselves and everybody else, yes, we can. And we had to show everybody that we could not, our children would not end up not eating if we went to the office because that was what people believed would happen. I mean, there was this big belief women go to the office, the children become crazy. They become, you know, <laughs> they, they, they fall apart and our children are destitute and never eat and all that kind of stuff. So the culture that we're looking at now that we're, you know, that it's a product of us having to say, no, things aren't going to fall apart. We can make sure that dinner still gets on the table. But of course, the culture has changed and we still keep that requirement on ourselves to do it all because at one point we did have to do it all. But now it's different. And the other piece of this, of course, is that fathers are discovering new opportunities to contribute to the family that those fathers in the fifties were like, Oh my God, that shows that I'm weak. If I play with my children other than a baseball, you know? And so, you know, putting diapers on a child, that's gross. That's for women. And now men are like, yeah, I like, you know, I don't like putting nobody, but likes diapers, but I like caring for my children. So everybody's still kind of in that, in that switching mindset mode, I think. And that's why I love kind of 
coming back Liz, to your audacious idea is that audaciousness gives us permission to go beyond just where the culture is discovering men can put diapers on children, right? But we can go beyond that. We can say, what about <laughs> if to me, working motherhood means, you know, I don't know what, again, I remember my version, you know, like when my neighbors and I started like putting down a schedule where, okay, she works here, I work here, kids have to be here. And we put a schedule together in the summers where it was a joint family. It was like, you know, two families together to get the kids to camps and stuff. That felt really audacious to me at the time. Um, and I don't think it's going to mean something very different to everybody else. So like, Liz, right now, what feels audacious to you? Audacious to me right now, me and Mary were talking before you came on. Um, I'm very outside of my comfort zone in many things, personally and professionally. And that feels audacious. Like I'm finally being audacious. Like I haven't succeeded yet, but I am being brave and I'm putting myself out there. I'm learning new things. Things. My family has to be ran differently now for personal reasons. My business is taking a major shift. So I, I feel like I'm starting over. Like, can you probably can't see it, but I'm like hugging myself really hard right now. And I feel like my shoulders are coming to my ears because right now I am being beautifully audacious. I don't know if I can explain it any better than that. Well, it's what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is, is that you're finding a new level of comfort with risk. Yes. Um, and you're, and the, the bravery and the audaciousness is how you're confronting the risk, um, which is different mm -hmm. than confronting it with fear and worry and, you know, panic. <laughs> I don't have time for it. I don't have time for fear. I don't have time for panic. Um, if I can be emotionally intelligent and know that when I do feel fear coming up, I don't have time for it. It's like, yeah, okay, you're there. You're telling me that what I'm doing right now is what I'm meant to be doing. And things will, you know, things are going to pan out the way they're going to pan out. I have control, but I don't have control, but I feel like I have control. So I feel that I am being audacious. My so, so let's... You know, I, I'm th having another thought here. Oh my God, I'm having a thought. So no. this is not this is not unlike most of the conversations I have with everybody in you know in a coaching capacity. Um, not necessarily because they're working parents, but because you know they're confronting a new life phase or a new career phase or whatever. Uh, but what's interesting to me when we bring the fact that we're working parents into this conversation, I think there's a lot of interesting things. But one of the things that comes to me is. It's really easy, particularly as a working mom, to tell yourself the story that I can't do X because of the kids. And particularly when you're looking at risk, I can't take on a new work project. I can't say no to this work project, you know, because I need to feed my kids or I need to spend time with my kids. But it's very easy to start putting the kids in both as an excuse sometimes, but also sometimes not an excuse. It's like, no, no, no. I mean, it's important to me to... Uh, to do this thing for my children so I can't do other things. And sometimes I wonder if that, it, it isn't that we shouldn't value our children and want to create a good, healthy family environment for them, whatever our family situation is. But it's it strikes me that we should listen to that little voice that says I can or can't, I should or shouldn't because of my children. Because it's too easy for that to turn into a story that doesn't serve us or ultimately them. At least that's my experience. So. What, how do you come um, at that issue of how to factor in the yes, but my children? I think that when that thought does come to mind, as it has a lot recently, I think to myself, well, how are my kids right now? Like right this very minute, are they happy? Yes. So who does it really hurt for me to go and try and be audacious and do X, Y, and Z later on tonight when the kids are in bed and I've crossed the finish line. Is it really going to hurt them tonight? No. So why don't I use my energy on that and just try? So I think that when you are more present 
and not worrying about what's about to happen, could happen, should happen. And just try, like put the excuses aside. I also think that when you narrow it down to your children as being an excuse, and I can say firsthand that I've done that, because it, it, it was an no. excuse. <laughs> it's, that's also coming from a place of scarcity, that you don't have enough energy or that you don't have the courage, the audaciousness to do what it is that you are being pulled toward to do. Nothing's gonna happen if you're coming from a place of scarcity. So when I realize I have the energy for it, I could stay up a little late tonight because you have this passion or you have this urge because you want to be audacious. It's not hurting anybody to just try it in that moment or in a few hours ahead. You know, you're, I think you're, I love that. And, and you're saying something that I think can apply both in the space of a day, but also in the space of a career, right? Because what you're, what I'm hearing you say about audaciousness, which I love, is that audacious can mean something different at different times. You know, tonight when the kids are asleep, it might mean something different than it is in this moment when you have to take them to the doctor, right? Uh, or you know, you have to call the doctor and say, "I can't get them to you today." You know, can we reschedule their annual checkup for next week? Which they'll say, "No, it has to be in three months," and then you get it in that whole thing. But you know, that, that that audaciousness really does mean different things at different times, and and that's true for our career. You know, there's there were times in my career where I was. I was not using this children as an excuse, but I was saying, I really want to spend more time with my children. This time with them right now is really important. So there are things that I want to do for my career that I'm going to do later, like when they graduate, you know? And when I didn't make it an excuse, and this is the other thing I guess that I think is important, is when we get in the habit of using our children as an excuse, if we're not careful, they hear that. And they feel mm -hmm. like they're the reason we can't do things, which is, which is not true. You know, yeah. and we don't want to communicate to them that they're holding us back or that they're the reason we can't be having fun or anything else. You know, we want to make an assertive choice that makes them feel valued, uh, but also makes us feel valued. So, um, you know, listening to that voice, making the choice of where you spend your energy and what audaciousness means at any point in time. To me, that's when you talk about emotional intelligence. That's an expression of emotional intelligence through a working mom, which is different than the choices that somebody who doesn't have children is making, but it's the same process. They still need to be conscious of their energy and where they're spending it and what they're doing and et cetera. Uh, but when you have a child in the mix now, it's like, what is my decision making process? The way I talk about this, the way I think about this, what is it communicating to my child about their value and, and what am I modeling for them? Which to me, made it easier to be better at it because I felt more accountable when I knew my children were there than when I was just like, this could be all happening in my own head. No one would know, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least that's how I like yeah, to think they, about it. <laughs> they offer that uh, truth serum, like, mom, what is it that you're exactly doing? And they question it. So pure, so innocent, so sweet. It is, it is. And, um, and actually, so there's a thought. So should, if, if working moms are becoming audacious in their own, you know, whatever that means to them at any point in time, uh, what's good to teach our kids about audacity in the face of risk? <laughs> you know, uh, what's a way to think about that? What I do, is I'm honest with my children um, in that when I feel scared about something, I tell them. And I'm a verbal processor, so that works for me. And I'll tell them, oh, I'm trying something new today. Oh, I'm talking to so-and-so today. I'm really trying hard. I'm going to give it my best. It's I am characterizing what I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm showing them that I have these goals that I'm going after things. So I guess what I'm doing is I'm explaining to them what audaciousness means to me, Dana. What a great question. I explain it to them because I want them to be just as audacious, if not more, because the world's gonna be 
who knows? It's going to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to prepare them not only by being a role model, but by having those conversations, even though they probably won't get it. Like my three-year-old isn't absorbing anything, but I'm sure my eight-year-old is. And my six-year-old, she's a smart little, she's getting it. And they probably feel the energy to it. And I talk to them about energy management. So they like, you know, they, they, you see this like little smile coming mm, like on their faces. I'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so yeah, I explained to them what my version of audaciousness is. Great question. Great question. Yeah. And, and, and of course, kids at that age, you know, when you give them a label, then they can start to attach the feeling to the label, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's cool. I mean, and, and I, I like what you said about being a verbal processor and doing a, some amount of verbal processing so that your children can be part of that. Um, I, I didn't start doing that until my kids were, well, no, I, I did, but I was conscious about it, particularly with related relation to my work when they were older. And, um, I have to tell you, like my older son now, so he's 23, he's out of college, he's in his first job. And he and he asks me, "Oh, how did that contract go, Mom?" You know, he, he knows Aww. the name of my clients, and and he Aww. asks, and and it's actually becoming something that we talk about, you know. And I and I mentor him a little bit, you know, he, here and there on his new business and and stuff. And so it's like that conversation just keeps evolving. So the conversation you're having now, to the extent you're willing to. Uh, share that experience with your kids, I, I believe it will keep evolving to the point where it becomes something that's part of what bonds you together because they, they've they seen you grow and they've been part of that growth. And they I think they feel privileged to be welcomed, in, welcomed into your world as they're older anyway. Because, um, you know, parents don't often become vulnerable to their kids, um, which creates a barrier between us that gets harder as the kids get older to bridge. Um, which may be a topic for another <laughs> another <laughs> chat. <laughs> like audaciousness and vulnerability in parent-child relations. That sounds complicated. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we are just about out of time. So um, what oh, I want to yeah. do, um, I know the, the time right. just goes fast, uh, but we're, we're going to do more of these. Um, and what I want to do is, um, Ask so, Liz. What would be the questions that you would want to keep talking about? Now, I know you've gone into the forum, and um, I don't know. Did we ever figure out how to publish that link, Mary? Is that is it? Which are we? Are, well, this is my question. This is a logistics question. Are we talking a brand new forum itself, or the forum post that Liz has started? I think it's the forum post Liz has started. Wonderful. I can do that. Okay. That's what I got. <laughs> Because I was like, started creating a new forum, and I just was like, oh. Anyway, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I will go put that in right now. One moment. So, so Liz, what? If I'm a marketing mom out there, what is it you want to hear from me? What is it you want to explore with me in that forum conversation? I want to hear what they believe working mom culture is like right now for them. What are they experiencing? And then I want to hear uh, what specifically they think our beliefs are right now, how we behave as a culture, and the characteristics that we that we show both to our children and and at work. So I'm sure they're slightly different. And then I would like to hear. I believe that this culture shift is going to come down to us, not the government not corporate America. And I believe that that change will start by us checking out what our habits are like. So I would like to hear, you know, what are the bad habits they struggle with? What are the good habits that they would like to implement and why they think that those good habits would help enrich and change the working mom culture? Those are great questions. I look forward to that discussion. And I know we're talking about doing a webinar. We're going to do more of these labs. So this conversation will keep going on. And uh, Mary just published the links down here if you're on the video. If you're on the podcast, just go to empowerwomen.com uh, or empowercoaching.com. There's, there's a top nav for forums. And you can get down into the Empower Women forum and find this pretty easily because Liz has several forums there. 
Um, and I, you know, let's make this an ongoing conversation. I think all the questions you just asked are they're important for us to reflect on for ourselves. But it's it'd be great to hear, you know, what do other what are other women um, thinking about when it's like what are the beliefs that make that are in my working mom culture? Um, I think that's a really important discussion. So I want to thank you for hosting that discussion and and taking us the next step. And hopefully in the next. Uh, talk show and the next coffee break that you get a chance to come on, you can report back, you know, what are you hearing from people? Um, so, um, and, and I suppose, and we could have that conversation on Twitter too, but I think in the forum, it's easier to go and see it all in one place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I want to thank everybody for listening in and participating. I look forward to the ongoing forum discussions and um, Liz, thank you so much for being here and, and sharing your, your thinking on this because it's so important um, and it's such a great topic. And Mary, thank you always for like keeping us sane and getting us started and publishing our links. <laughs> really yeah, thank you both. This was a blast. I can't wait to do more. This is awesome. Good. Thank you very much. And uh, go to coffeebreak.inpowercoaching.com to see the recording and to uh, sign up for reminders and invitations. And we will see you next Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern. Uh, for the Empower Coffee Break. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye. Bye.